Hey, what's up, everybody? Video 44 coming at you another video. All right, so uh, I've been sitting here um, smudging. I kind of decided I just wanted to give myself a good finale. I turned the fan on, so I hope it ain't messing with the audio there, but I, it's a little hot in here right now. In fact, today was a hotter day than yesterday, but it didn't really feel as if it were hotter than yesterday when I was walking, so I'm thankful for that. It was hot as hell, but not as hot as yesterday. But in the house it is, but... Uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm sitting here, you know, praying, of course, smudging, as I said, and just asking the Lord to help me have a grand finale to this place, like, to walk away from this place feeling better than I did, uh, you know, just, just in general, just feel better about leaving this place than I ever would have under these circumstances normally. So that's where my head is, is really at right now, man, just, you know, I, I got the notion that I, I would turn on another therapy session even though I've been doing them all day and you know how I am this is how I am uh, when I'm stressing these days it's a comfort zone to turn on the camera uh, it's a coping mechanism to speak to the wide public it's very strange psychology here but that's what it is and uh, you know man I just I don't know if I could if I'm going to recap everything that's already been said, been said that's why I don't find myself uh, speaking just fluently right now but it's the end of the day, man. I've been so very blessed. Like, this smudging away from me. It's getting a little bit too much in my nose right now. But, uh, you know, I'm very blessed, man. I'm very thankful. I'm very open-minded. Things are getting better. Yeah, right by the window. I'm going continue to smolder. But, you know, I just got the notion that I should just say some prayers and some more thank yous in regards to the smudge that I just did right there. Put it, you know, as I was taught, you open up all the windows and then you hit all the corners of the of the half of the house and you go through all the doorways and open up all the cupboards and stuff like that that's the way it was supposed to be done from what i've been told but uh it was something i ain't did in a long time in this apartment and it was something i did a lot when i first bought uh bought the smudge what do they really call that i forgot what they call it it's just it's escaping me but smudging is what they call it but it's it's, it's a specific thing that you do and you know, I used to do it like once a month, but I just stopped. But tonight, it just felt like it was right. And so, you know, I rolled a couple of joints, but I couldn't hardly smoke them. They weren't rolled very well, to be honest with you. That's never been my strength. Uh, but, yeah, man, I'm just trying to enjoy the, the rest of my night. And I think I'm doing a good job of that in terms of just trying to relax, get my spirit right. Let the Lord know that I'm still thankful, all that good stuff. Listen to all those therapy sessions, all those prayers. They set with my soul very well. I hope they did the same for y'all. And now we just anticipating the unknown, man. This is the faith apply application hour, I guess. You just got to apply your faith. You know, there are certain things that I could do to make things better for myself, I believe. Um, and, and I just got to ask the Lord to help me do that. I've been allowing my mental health excuse to keep me from what I need, but I don't like these consequences from within this mental health mind. I don't like I don't like the consequence. So, you know, rather than to suffer my own ills, I'm asking the Lord to help me with that. Excuse me. Uh, so that's one of those things that I, I just know that he can do. I ate a potato. <laughs> I ate a potato. I did get a meal in, some some type of meal. It's It sat on my stomach like it was... A, a whole pizza I kid you not my stomach ain't eating nothing but I did scarf down that potato and put all kinds of hot sauce in it it was delicious I let I, it overcook so it tastes almost like a like a chip <laughs> or or a french fry it was I was exactly what I wanted it to be so for that being my uh, second meal of the day first meal was an apple <laughs> it's just what my body's been doing man. it's just what it's been doing and I don't really understand it I, I would say it's accredited to the situation but it, these problems started before the sheriff got here so I just don't know when my appetite's going to return that's the reality of it I have no idea when my appetite's going to return but the Lord has made it so that I've been able while I've had this stomach problem to, to get back and forth down to that courthouse without catching one bus you know what I mean get, taking that little hour hour there hour back walk I guess it's about it's, it's almost an hour there hour back and it's like in the sun so my conditioning has definitely served me well and i'm so thankful for the lord to give me for giving me all of those 
uh, motivational days to work out and all those days where I really put it in and got it in and want him to continue to work on my stem in that way so I can continue to uh, age the way I need to age in order to feel my best. Um, I think the Lord wants me to be optimistically excited about what doors will now open from here. Granted, it could be whatever. It, it doesn't look great, but I just follow the faith, and the faith is telling me that there's a lot to c c continue to appreciate in regards to what's ahead and to hold. Seriously. The most strong message that came my way in spirit tonight while smudging was hold. Hold my shares of AMC. I'm not going to get into an AMC spill. I don't feel like getting into an AMC spill right now. But I'm just telling you that beyond all else, I say, Lord, what are we doing? What's up? How are you going to help me? This, that, that, that. The one thing that he communicated beyond all else was a very clenched fist in regards to those shares. He clenched, my fist clenched in the spirit, so to speak. Like, you hold them damn shares. Because I was sitting there thinking, like, Lord, you know, did I make you happy? That's why I. I was prompted to believe what we were talking about in that regard. What he was referring to when I felt that that was what was compelling me was this AMC because that's what I was talking about before my fist did that little clenching type of thing. It was like I was asking the Lord, like, you asked me to stay here and wait for the squeeze. The squeeze never happened or it has yet to happen while I'm here. Do you intend for me to give up on this play and then that's when my fist was like nah <laughs> immediately my hand just started closing like this more or less unbeknownst to my own desires to clinch it which is very normal for me because I've been telling y'all I've been moving like that in the spirit for a very long time but nevertheless it's one of those situations where that's exactly how that went and I know I know there are a lot of people who are waiting to find out I already know. And that's the beauty of the, the relationship I have with God. The question is when. Not if. It's when. And so I'm getting chills. It's, I've been getting chills all day long at certain key moments. This is another one. But uh, spiritually, I told you guys earlier that I think spiritually there's going to be some things that are going to guide me from here. That it's not just going to be an empty understanding for me. Even though I have that right now, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Soon, I believe the Lord is going to start opening up my eyes as to what it is we're actually walking into from here. And I've been telling myself for the last four months that this is my year. I've been telling myself this for almost four or five months. With all the difficulties that I've been going through, this is my year. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to make the most money I've made this year. It don't mean that I'm going to have everything go my way this year. But one of the most important years of my life I am in past, present, and future I'm certain of it and so this is one of those things where it's like what do you want to do God, you know, what do you I'm curious to see what your spiritual interaction with me is going to be from here because you've been giving me chills off and on all day long you've been telling me certain things like I can walk out of here without really bringing too much with me and be absolutely fine <laughs> You done told me, you know what I mean? Some stuff is like, all right, am I telling myself this? I don't know the difference in some cases. All I know is when I question, am I telling myself this? And then I look at what happens later on. It's like, no, it was God talking to me every time, every single time. I want people to know. That's the only reason why I have confidence like this to say, oh, my hand clenched by itself and all this other weird stuff that it sounds like. It's because afterwards, it's always something that correlates with him basically having been told me something in that way never fails and so it's like you just learn after 39 years of the weirdness of it all to just it ain't weird it ain't weird it's weird in a sense that nobody in there is going to ever really know what i felt but i think the evidence is gonna be left here <laughs> i think the evidence that the spirit in me the spirit of god that i speak of does truly insert certain specific things into me that he wants me to have that will help me anticipate basically what it is that he wants me to be about 
or what it is that I expect to see or what it is he wants me to expect rather so that's what I'm hoping uh, for some 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 signs to come very soon um, and so I think they have man that's what I'm telling you they have tonight clench fist and you can walk out of here you can leave all this stuff it ain't gonna matter and so all these different things is like man I don't know what God's doing I don't know if I'm finally just losing it and I'm a certain God in situations to cover myself where he doesn't I always leave room for the cap always because at the end of the day as a person who claims to perceive himself as mentally ill you can never rule out your mental illness in anything ever and maybe that takes away from my credibility but I just live with my reality and at the same time I know what he's been proving to me I know the predictor of faith is always a better predictor than that of my doubt every single solitary time and for the stuff that he plans on giving you bad news for he will also equip you with the strength to inherit that bad news properly so long as you turn to him it'll still feel like it's okay just like you saw me deal with today Y'all saw how I handled that. Y'all saw how I handled the first time when they told me that this was going to take place. I walked out of there praising God. I walk out of there praising God every time, bro, because at the end of the day, he gave me the ability to walk out of there. I'm alive. I'm not walking into a jail cell after leaving that courtroom. A lot of people, obviously, that's their experience in that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so my mind goes straight to the lady again that I saw at the at the hearing today with the same issue I had I just really was struck by not only her story and just how sad it was but also how callous that prosecutor was and I just thought I was listening to pure evil like I, I thought I was literally, literally listening to the, 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 the callousness and the corruption of that of which I surmise is wrong with all of the world he, was, he, he embodied all of the stuff and just listening to his voice I was like man that man is devoid of any care for this woman's well-being regardless it's all about him making his client happy this is a demon and so i'm just being honest with y'all that's exactly what came to mind like damn i'm listening to pure evil right now now the judge was absolutely not the judge is a great guy it seemed to me based on what it is that he he showed to me both the times that i was able to see him uh i got good energy from the guy i think he did a job the right way the only way you know the way the law allowed but like as far as his lenience and his his empathy for what he was listening to you could tell he wasn't having no fun sending people away like that he didn't he didn't enjoy sending me away he didn't enjoy sending her away and i'm okay with that that makes it a lot easier to to inherit bad news if you think it's coming from solid humans i'd rather my judgment come from somebody that i can look in the eye and say i think that person's rolling with the with the right side of things then to listen to a callous prosecutor like that dude was i don't know what his name was but he was really intent after listening to her story on making his client happy above all else and it, it it's just the the it's the embodiment of the evil that i try to stay away from when i stay away entirely from people it's that type of callousness that i don't vibe with it on any level you know it's that type of business practice an agreement on this earth that I speak against every day. That's why I'm broke. Because I'm not going to allow myself to turn into that to get paid. Or any version of that. And that's the problem. It's like I got to find a balance to say I'm not going to turn into that if I make away from myself. Because I'm not that. You got to be like that before you even get the money. You got to be like that inherently. You know what I mean? So that's my thing. It's like I got to know who I am versus what it is that I want. Turning me into somebody that I'm not. And so, because I've never had a whole lot, I just assumed that it would do whatever the heck it would do, as opposed to actually allowing myself to have it and finding out. Or at least putting myself in a position to get it, because it ain't that easy. I ain't gonna sit up here and act like money is just gonna be falling out the sky because I decide I want it. If it were that easy, people wouldn't be struggling that hard. But when you believe you have the talents I have, you think you have somewhat of a, a path that maybe others don't, and I'm just choosing not to take that path because of stuff like that. <laughs> Because cause, cause the energy's like that That I don't want anywhere near me You know what I mean, honestly And I know when you get into the arena of ambition and money You're going to be dealing with that A lot of the time All of y'all know that because y'all deal with it I'm the one that does it I'm cool though And so these are what gets me in trouble When I end up getting evicted out of my own crib These are the problems that come with not wanting to deal with those problems You know what I'm saying? 
Now, because I don't want to deal with him and his nonsense, now I got to deal with my own and type of stuff like this. So it's like, I don't have it together. I just know what I don't like. I don't have it together. I just know what I will not stand for. I don't have it together. I just know what evil is. I don't want to have nothing to do with it in any way. But specifically, those forms of evil are so very irritating for this spirit who has a lot of desire to be more so unselfish and more so willing to help people for for what they need, not necessarily for what's better for myself. And maybe maybe you're in that position as a professional, you're thinking about your client. Maybe you're thinking about the, you know, that's what it is. But at the end of the day, you arguing that a woman who's told a story like that should ultimately be thrown her backside. Uh, you might as well just put a bullet in her head, bro. As far as I can tell, but the court of public, of my opinion, you need to be in jail, right? If something happens to her. See, that's the world that I want to live in, where we actually scale things properly. We don't really scale things properly because we prioritize money and not empathy and not the betterment of the preservation of preservation of life. Because the way you see it is if we, if we get the money, then we preserve the life. But it's like in the process of getting the money, you know you're also discarding of lives too. In a lot of different ways, whether we want to look at it that way or not. In a lot of situations, depending on what we're doing, you discard the people. So for me, it's like, nah, I'm not going to... I'm not going to act like that vibes with my spirit in any way. I'm not with any of that. I'm not with any of that. The way I see it is the village is responsible for keeping people healthy and happy. We can send money all overseas to all over different people, even though there are plenty of places overseas that we're not sending money that really needs it. We'll send it where we think we want to send it and then call ourselves humanitarians. I'm not with it. I'm not, I just don't think that's what it is. That's not the way to do it. If you really want to help the world, you first help your people. You educate them, you empower them with the ability to understand finances properly. You don't create chaos and stock market and all kinds of weird stuff for people to lose money in because ultimately that keeps your country weaker. You want to inspire everybody to have education. You want to have everybody be on the same page. And if you got some sense, some real sense, you want everybody to have their energy right in your country. However that looks. You want people to at least be aware of such things. And so America, to me, is just, they prioritize things a little different. And then we look up and we're never quite happy. We got this problem. We got that problem. We're guarding against this. We're hoping we can get that. We're sending this person money, but we ain't getting none back. It's like a America, man. Particularly in my country. I just want to see us overcome our racism issues, overcome our classism issues, overcome our whatever we have so that we can finally prioritize our people as a unit not black folks not white folks not asian not mexican every freaking body who's going to be under that red white and blue needs a proper education man a proper education you hear me that's what it comes down to you got too many stupid people voting too many ignorant individuals who don't know one plus one voting for the most important stuff and then it trickles down to other individuals and it's all bad from there I just I want to see that get better here in our country but we're so separated by the by the differences that we have I think and we're so warped by the cultures we agree upon till we never ever actually truly welcome good things to ourselves as a country we don't we don't welcome good energy to ourselves as a country at all. I'm just being honest. We call ourselves police in the world, but then you look at some of the famine taking place. It's like you can't send a couple of billion over there. You want to send a billion over here. You want to spend a billion over there, but you can't spend enough billions in your own country to fix up the homelessness out here. And I'm telling you, it does trickle down. The reason why you take care of your own country first it's because when everybody's empowered with education and, and fiscal understanding and good energy, that's when they all are able to start dreaming of different things that send them in different directions. And thus, more people are going to be dreaming of helping people who don't have nothing in places they are where nothing is found. You empower every American with the three things I just said. 
path to good energy, whether it's solid religion, whatever is work, works for you. Understand how to use money, invest it, earn it, save it, spend it properly. It, it, like real smarts, it pertains to our, our physical spending. And then third, of course, just working on the different things that make us different that we ultimately are having a hard time overcoming. The history, the lies, the differences in what good is defined as in others. That's a real one for us. On one side, good equals whatever protects me and my side. If it opposes us, it's bad. And that's kind of how we tend to be simple-minded in that way in this country a lot of times. Us versus them. They're evil. We're good. What we want is of God. What they want is of Satan. It's like when you start realizing that it's not quite that simple as we assess each other and what it is that ultimately make our country better. If you realize it's not us against them, but it's us against us, then you will understand that the U.S., us, needs to finally come together in a way that we refuse. And it ain't going to be under the flag. It's going to be the understanding that if we finally do away with the symbols and start cherishing the individuals more, and not the flags and whether or not somebody's respecting the flag. The flag is wonderful. People died for the flag. But what were they dying for really? It's for the preservation of the people regardless of the flag they waved. They were protecting us. My brother is a Marine because he's protecting us. He went out there and did what he had to do. Putting his soul on the line. Not for a flag. But for a people and a country and a land. Regardless of... So, so the symbols that we put these emphasis on symbols and we watch other countries put emphasis on symbols. Are they valuing the energy of the people who are under those symbols? Or are they just symbols? It ain't no different than what I see in the streets. As it pertains to your various different gangs and stuff like that. Symbols, fam. What really separates us but the agreement to these symbols? The allegiance to these symbols. They don't tell you who's who. Every time we look at these stories in the streets, we hear about people turning on each other on their same hood. This person from that hood, he lost his life because that person from his own hood did him in. That don't vet people properly. These symbols don't vet people properly. Your proximity doesn't vet people properly. You got to venture out. And I'm a hypocrite because I don't venture out. But I know what's needed in that situation, man. And I don't think most people have anxieties like me. Not most. Y'all got to venture out. Get out of your neighborhood, bro. Get out of your state. And I, this starts with me. I'm going to have to leave my state at some point. Whether it be forcefully now or at some point by choice. But we just got to get away from our comfort zones to know what else is out there. So we don't think we're the center of attention and thus put so much of an ego on our symbols. And not enough of an emphasis on overcoming the evil that often our symbols really end up standing for. I think the Lord put that in my heart to say. I didn't know if I would have anything new to say, but it's, it's just one of them days, man. From the moment I got up this morning, I was talking some real stuff. From the moment I woke up this morning, I had real stuff on my heart. And I just, I, if this is going to be one of the last memories I have in this place, let it be of good content, like great content even. So I hope that's what I'm giving y'all. I, I personally enjoyed everything I've been saying. That sounds weird, but I, I'm confident, man. I'm confident that the Holy Spirit is what's empowering me, not my own understanding in a lot of these conversations, in these therapy sessions. But it really is the Holy Spirit that, that enters in my heart, gives me the confidence to speak against power, confidence to speak against symbols, so to speak, confidence to talk against the people behind the curtain, confidence to speak against my own evils and actions. Confidence to know that the truth is the light and the light is the Lord. I'm a child of God, I will believe in the Lord my God. And as I do so, I will help others understand why I do. Not just that I do and they better. No, look at what I'm looking at. See why this brain that has to overthink, underthink, and, and triple think has come to the conclusion that this is the way to go. And it, 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 a lot of it has to do with my upbringing. Making it so that the culture of it all was acceptable. That's important. But from there, I was able to find a real belief that checks and balances that I put that through past all them tests God passed all the tests I had out there for whether or not I should trust him and if I'm being frank 
I put a lot of tests out there. A lot. Passed them all. No exaggeration. That's why I walked out of there with that bad news and two days left. That's why I'm not sitting up here scrambling and running around the house right now, smoking that V like, oh my God, let me call somebody, let me go outside and do something. None of that is in my heart right now because he's given me such a ridiculously confident truth to hold on to. And that truth is that he exists, he communicates with me regularly, and he got me on a straight path, headed straight to him. And everything I got to do along the way, he's going to get done, period. I just got to manage my own head and not quit early. And so that's the hard part. It's trusting him, listening to myself, tell myself good things, and then believe in the Lord as he puts it in my heart to. So... That belief is what I'm looking to apply now. I'm rather okay, I guess is the word. It comes and goes in regards to the concerns, but I'm doing what I know how to do and I know it's going to pay off. I always coped with something. If usually in the past it was video games. This would not be what I did. I would do, I would be looking for this in video games. And what I would end up finding was angst, servers, Messing with me on 2K, basically. Because that was the only game I ever really wanted to play most of the time in my adult life. But, like, I would go with whatever sorrows I had. And then I would find even... I would find anger. I would find people toying with my head or algorithms toying. Whatever, however that goes with the computers. But I just found myself in a space where I felt like it was making me angry. Or, dare I say, worse. In terms of how I was feeling. Playing them damn games. And so now it's like. I'm turning to something that I can do something with. And I'm doing, turning to something that I think I can get something from. And so that's what I do. That's why I'm turning on this camera during these circumstances. And why I always did. Throughout the course of these last couple of years. Anytime I was feeling anything. Even if it was dire. I sit down and make a therapy session. Or eight in one day. Whatever it took to get my feelings better. And so that's a practice I keep going. I don't really know what to say other than that I'm going to continue to believe that this works for me. And uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for the outlet, for the outlet, rather. Um, yeah, man. Gee, I, I really wonder how much that fan is ru ruining this audio. That's what I'm wondering about right now. But, you know, all in all, man, I just... Just wonder what the heck is next, man. My boy T's calling me right now. I want to keep this video going. I'll call him back right after it's over. I'm pretty sure he'll watch this. i uh, holler at you in a minute. Uh, let's rendezvous and make sure we get things done tomorrow, brother. I appreciate all your help. No doubt. I'll call him right back. But uh, God is good, man. Don't ever let the bad times or my head hanging down being dejected in any way. Let you think that I'm feeling anything other than... I'm a little exhausted to say the least, but, and this is a really, really hard to, to, to absorb, but the faith that I hold will always carry me forward and this is no exception at all. You know, I love all y'all, man. The Lord put it in my heart to say that. I don't think I ever put that out there because I don't know that it's right to tell people you love them and you don't know who's on the other end of the thing you have no idea but i think that at the end of the world the end of the day i love the world <laughs> the end of the day i love the world and for better for worse for all that we have all our flaws for all of us here who probably you know guilty or something at the end of the day it's a lot of beautiful stuff here it was created by a beautiful god it was created for us to enjoy the beauty that it is and I think I've been robbed of that by my, my head to a degree. I didn't enjoy the beauty of the world the way I, I have needed to in order to, both, to best appreciate where I'm at. But nevertheless, I love the world and you're encompassing that. You know, so not to say that I'm where I need to be to convey my love to the world in a way that would make me the most unselfish person or nothing like that. But it's just I want the best for this place. I want the best for our people. I want the best for where we're going to be, to, who we're going to be tomorrow, where we're going to be tomorrow. I think about all the different things that 
ultimately the Lord has done for me in regards to surmising what type of world is out there, even though I haven't really left L.A. very much. You know, and so that's what I'm thankful for in regards to these devices, just having a peek into the outside world. It really gives you an understanding of just how much more out there for me there may be. And so I hope that this will open up that door. May this be the last era of my life where I feel more comfortable, isolated, without everything that I need ever again. I don't want to feel more comfortable with that ever again. For any reason. But least of all to do something uh, that ultimately should be done a different way, more properly. And so that's the wisdom. If you're going to make any sacrifices of any kind, make sure that in your sacrifice, all that you're doing is correct. Because the last thing you need to be doing is sacrificing and then from there losing even more because the sacrifice itself was incorrect. So that's what I can say. I, with the AMC, did it wrong, as I've mentioned a million and six times. Did it wrong in the sense that you have to do it to protect yourself. You see, if you do it the right way, you won't lose all your money. You won't be in the situation I'm in. But I saw it like this, man. I saw that position run up so far. And because I had over leveraged, I was in a very, very great space for my finances. I didn't capture those finances or sell at that top because I don't think it made any sense to any apes at that time to do so. But maybe selling a few shares since I ended up picking from them anyway at that at those prices might have been able to save me so much of these troubles right here um, but then you look up in the squeeze you realize you should have never sold any shares ever you should have just been buying and buying and buying and buying with every little bit you had all of y'all should have over leveraged to no end because when that thing squeezes the more you've built the more you have but of course they reverse split it so all of that wisdom's out the window too so, I mean, it just is what it is, man. We're fighting the corruption. And we're also fighting against our own doubt. And we're fighting against, depending on your finances, whatever they are. And so, for me, it's, it's poverty. We're fighting poverty. We fight, you know what I mean? We're fighting. Fighting age, in my case. I'm going to be 40. You know? Let me squeeze this thing at 60. All right. <laughs> get, 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 some, get some good years in, man. But, you know, I, I just feel like for it to really be worth it to us mortal bodies it would be great if this happened very soon so we could have some time to enjoy it for those of us people who are of a certain age i guess you could say so they're gonna try to drag this thing out to probably kill us all off before anybody <laughs> any of these apes get any of that money they're gonna try to drag this out to our in the days in my humble opinion that's what i think they're gonna try to do if they have any any chance to continue on this path but we're just gonna continue to shame them <laughs> that's all we gonna do see that's the difference now that the apes exist and that we've been in this play for this long there's always gonna be an antagonist to what it is that they're doing loud as hell and obnoxious for no reason or well, for every reason but you know that's just it's the energy itself it's like loud as hell then that's what the apes are gonna be from here on out anytime them hedgies do anything you're gonna be hearing from us anytime they try anything it's gonna be another voice that's just as obnoxious as theirs when they fud fear uncertainty and doubt so it's like for me i just continue to pray about this for our whole amc but worship god in jesus name this is one of my things that i say on a daily basis because what i didn't want is any aspect of this play any aspect of this play to not be anointed in in, in the way that i do it if I'm making mistakes, if it gets me kicked all the way out of my apartment, if I lose all the money, all that I want it to be able I want each and every aspect of what could be possible to blow back positively on this person here. That's why I pray about it. If I never get the squeeze, I still want to find happiness. If these people drag it out, I want to be able to make a life for myself regardless if I never get a dollar or two. If this thing squeezes, I want to be able to do good things with the money and not, not let it succumb my life entirely you know what I mean if, if it takes another six months cool if it takes another six years cool I don't have a problem with this play in any way because everything that they about to do or have done or are thinking to do or anything around it it's already been prayed about all of it and the possibilities of them doing anything of any kind it's already been addressed with the most high now. 
And so that's what I got to say, man. And I'm going to send a prayer out for the apes. Since we've been doing all this praying today, I'm going to pray for my apes. Check this out. Heavenly Father, I come to you today because I've prayed many prayers with you about the apes. I've come on this channel and talked to my understanding, to my own understanding in regards to this play. But I've never come to you in regards to this play on this channel. It's never correlated. But we're going to do that now since we're reaching a space where, for my personal life, this, is, this looks like the worst thing for me to have been in this. But for my spiritual walk... I just know it's yet another day to wait for another situation to get better within the squeeze. Maybe we see another day soon where we has, we cross a 100% threshold uh, in one day. It's, it's more than possible. I've seen a thing clear 100% in three hours. So that's another thing they need to understand. We know how much power backs this thing. We've seen it move. We know we know what it does. We know how quickly it can clear all that stuff that y'all doing. So it's to continue in prayer. Holy Spirit, I just ask you come to the situation here in regards to our circumstances is AMC, GME, whatever the stock may be, apes, people who are trying to uh, align with uh, the understanding that fairness in the market is something that otherwise uh, we should not be living without. And, you know, I, I just ask that the Holy Spirit help us educate ourselves further on what it is that ultimately we need to know so that we can cover all of our bases in regards to this play if we haven't already for those laymen's that is and for those who are in a position to where maybe they're not as privy to what they need to know and maybe would otherwise be caught off guard by what is going on with the price action I just ask that you help it so that regardless of where they're at right now when the play does take place they have when the squeeze does take place they have no regrets if they're all of their finances that they were hoping to receive in the squeeze play takes place in their lives. That all the sacrifices that were made in regards to the apes are ultimately realized. I ask that whatever it is that ultimately would cause this to happen be done with. I ask that those who are over leveraged on the other side understand whatever it is that's best for their lives in regards to your salvation that you have for them. I don't wish for any over punishment of any kind because I'm feeling the wrath upon of you upon my life at this time and a person who understands wrath knows not to ask for it for anyone else only for the mercy of God because the wrath is inevitable mercy isn't necessary so that's what I ask for Holy Spirit mercy upon those you punish in regards to the circumstance both ape and hedgy give us the peace necessary of a good punishment so that when we do fall on the sword it won't be unbeknownst to us why we have. You are going to allow us to know that we have no right to toy with you. And that's the energy the Holy Spirit gave me this morning, or rather in this afternoon when I was coming home. At some point in time, he let me know that I was toying with him and that I should not. And you, you, when you step over that line and you cross the line with God, that punishment is meant to save your life. That punishment is meant to save your soul. It depends on what you're into. It's not meant to just make God feel better with his ego because he has the ability to punish you and now therefore you hit. Nah, that ain't what it is. It's about making sure that you know that that warning is in, is, is in the spirit of love. That strike, that wrath is in the spirit of of a desperate cry from a creator who wants to save your soul from the enemy that he's, he's battling with. Because he knows if you if you cross over that threshold, he could he lose you. So that's what I'm here to say, man. I want to pray for the hedgies. I want to pray for the apes. Some of us apes ain't good people. Some of them hedgies ain't bad people. They on the wrong side. They doing the wrong thing. And they have to pay for it just like anybody else doing evil. But at the end of the day, I'm asking for grace I'm asking for salvation. I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm asking for Moaz. I'm asking for justice in this play. And I'm asking for the Holy Spirit to gather all of the apes who have suffered like I'm suffering. Gather us up and make sure that we get exactly what is best for our circumstances, whether the squeeze takes place or not. See to it that we're made whole for the sacrifices we made and for our intentions upon this play. In Jesus' name. 
I ask that you take what it is that makes us different politically. Take what it makes us different in regards to our symbols if we're in different countries. Apes who happen to be in places that I've never heard of. Apes who've been in this play longer than I have in places I've never heard of. I know you exist. I'm praying for you. In this prayer, you are included. It ain't just about America. This is a worldwide play. That American hedge funds, it seems to me, are screwing with the world's economy. And so what I ask is that the Holy Spirit send out enough good ape energy so that people around the world who are being screwed by these hedges understand that that is not an American agreement. That we are too being screwed by these people and that there are many, many Americans who do not want to take from you. And so that's the prayer I'm praying today that the people of all over the world who are being taken advantage of by these people just like I am understand that that is not a country wide agreement that we do not condone over leveraging in the stock market or running companies into the ground or trying to run companies into the ground while retail is attached to it just for the sake of doing so none of these things none of these things are things that I'm asking the Lord to do nothing about I'm asking him to step in at this time to not only change the minds of those who need to change but also to change the circumstances involving those who are suffering the most in regards to this play. And make it so that the market will be fair, Jesus. God, make it so that the market will be fair. So that whatever it is that people invest their money in, they got a very solid chance of feeling good about whatever it is they invested in, whether they win or they lose. They don't feel like they've been stolen from, and they certainly don't feel like they've been toyed with mentally. Lord, I ask for mercy upon those and forgiveness for those who intentionally look to belittle the apes by way of their mouths and the things that they post. FUD posters, individuals who pretend to be apes but are actually here for the hedge funds, whoever they may be. I ask for mercy upon them, Father. Do not allow your wrath to be unforgiving in regards to these individuals for they do not know who they toying with. But I do. As I live your wrath, I know who I'm toying with, and that's why I choose not to anymore. And I'm sorry for what it is that I did that went against you in any way, Lord. And I ask that you take from what it is that makes me guilty and apply the truth to my life so that I know not to ever try you again. And I ask that you, whatever it is that makes others guilty, you also give them the grace of that understanding and the beauty of that punishment so that you can save their souls from the enemy that tries to take their souls forever a lot of what we're doing on this earth we are mortgaging our eternity and if you don't believe in god you're about to have that stolen from you if you don't believe in that kind of thing you're going to have it robbed from you you better think of that my name is bdl44 i thank you all for watching i'm out